Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Illinois Toolworks Inc, ticker symbol ITW. We're looking at the business today because Illinois Toolworks is a dividend king. So dividend kings are members of the S&P 500 who have consecutively increased their dividend payouts for each of the past 50 years. For Illinois Toolworks, they've consecutively increased their dividends for each of the past 59 years, which gives them one of the longest track records of increasing their dividends of any publicly listed business in the world. So currently, Illinois Toolworks is trading for $232.70 per share. Over the last year, their stock price is up 9%. So this is in contrast to much of the rest of the S&P 500, which is down over this time frame. Over the last five years, Illinois Toolworks is compounding their stock price at about 7% annually. Over the last 10 years, their stock price is compounding at a rate of 14.5% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last 18 years, Illinois Toolworks stock price is compounding at a rate of about 10% annually. So keep in mind that the company's average dividend yield throughout this time frame would be in addition to this compounded annual return. And currently, Illinois Toolworks pays out about a 2.2% dividend yield, which is a higher dividend yield than average within the S&P 500. So Illinois Toolworks is trading about $20 below their 52-week high. They're up about $50 from their 52-week low. And Illinois Toolworks is a large business. They have about a $71 billion market cap. So for more background about the business, Illinois Toolworks is a diversified global manufacturer that produces specialized industrial equipment, consumables, and related services. The firm operates 87 global divisions through seven distinct operating segments, automotive OEM, construction products, food equipment, specialty products, test and measurement and electronics, polymers and fluids, and welding. About half of its revenue comes from its operations in North America, with the remainder originating from international markets. Illinois Toolworks takes a bottom-up and decentralized approach to portfolio management, with the exception that each segment must apply its 80-20 operating process modeled on the parietal principle. In some ways, with its decentralized bottom-up perspective, Illinois Toolworks operates along the lines of something like Berkshire Hathaway, so the company distributes its products directly to industrial manufacturers as well as through independent distributors. Illinois Toolworks was founded in 1912 and is based in Glenview, Illinois. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial methods metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Illinois Toolworks based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. So starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Illinois Toolworks return on capital did fluctuate somewhat. They earned a low of 24% returns on capital in 2020. However, even in that year and in the rest of these years as well, those returns on capital were significantly above those of a typical business. In their most recent fiscal year, Illinois Toolworks earns about a 33% returns on capital and averaged out throughout this time frame, Illinois Toolworks is producing about a 29.5% return on capital in a given year. So this is a big check here as this is twice as good as that metric we were looking for and their average returns on capital are nearly four times better than that of a typical business. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. This metric will be all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. So over this time frame, their revenues have grown very slightly by about 8%. Their earnings are also up over this time frame. They've grown by about a fifth with their earnings up nearly 18%. However, the business runs into a little bit of trouble here because their free cash flows have declined by 21% over this time frame. When we look at the company's cash flow statement, we can see that this mainly comes from a change in their accounts receivable, as well as a change in their inventories. So those together contributed to about a $900 change in their cash from operations. And those were principally responsible for their declines in free cash flow over this time frame. So because their free cash flows are down, this is going to be an X here on metric number two. And ideally, we don't want to see this because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business and a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day discounted back by some reasonable interest rate is ultimately what that business is going to be worth. A business can use its 
free cash flows to pay dividends, buy back shares, make acquisitions, reinvest back into the business, or pay down debt. So again, not great to see that their free cash flows are down here, even though that is just a change to their accounts receivable and a change in their inventories, something that we've seen from a number of businesses within the last year. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Illinois Toolworks on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years for the business. So we learned in our previous metric that their earnings are up 18% over this time frame. However, we still want to look at what they've done in terms of their shares outstanding. Likely beneficial to long-term shareholders in the business, Illinois Toolworks has bought back 8% of their shares outstanding in the last five years. So this is important because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership ownership percentage in that underlying business. So when a business buys back shares by decreasing the number that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which will ultimately increase the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to. And they do this without you having to spend a dime. So it's almost as if the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. And so just like with any other acquisition, we want the business to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. So in practical terms, this means that we want businesses buying back shares when their share price is trading for below the intrinsic value of the business, and it looks like a practical use of their capital relative to some of their other business opportunities. So you can dig in to learn more about exactly what valuations most of these buybacks were occurring at. However, between their buybacks and between their earnings growth here, this has led to strong earnings per share growth for Illinois Toolworks. This is a check on metric number three, and in their most recent fiscal year, Illinois Toolworks earned $9.77 for each share that they've had outstanding. Next up in metric number four, we're looking for something very similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years for the business. So in metric number two, we learned that their free cash flows have declined by 21% over this time frame. but with their share buybacks, these two are going to be competing against one another here. Unfortunately, their declines in their free cash flow outpace their share buybacks. So this means that Illinois Toolworks' free cash flow per share is down over these last five years. So this is going to be an X on metric number four. In their most recent fiscal year, Illinois Toolworks produced $6.25 worth of free cash flow for each share that they've had outstanding. And to recap where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we have two checks and two X's for Illinois Toolworks. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is using debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over their last five years. So Illinois Toolworks has increased their net debt position over this time. Currently, they have about $7.2 $7.2 billion worth of net debt. And over the last five years, the business has produced about $11.9 billion worth of free cash flow. So relative to the debt that the company employs, it looks like they're sufficiently cash flow generative to be able to cover this debt load and then some. This is a check here on metric number five, as it doesn't look like the business is overly levered relative to their abilities to produce free cash flows. And even with their recent declines in their free cash flows, if we were to extrapolate their most recent fiscal years worth of free cash flows out over the next five years, they'd still have more than enough free cash flow to be able to comfortably support and pay off all of this debt. So it looks like Illinois Toolworks is in a solid position here based off the debt that they're employing in their business relative to the free cash flows that the business is producing. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this may potentially offer us a reasonable starting point for an intrinsic value of Illinois Toolworks, and it could also offer us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. So we're using their total enterprise value because it takes into account both the company's market cap and their net debt position. And it's going to give us a perspective of Illinois Toolworks that's more similar to as if the company were a private business. So currently, Illinois Toolworks has about a $78 billion market cap. And we learned that over their last five years, the business has produced about $11.9 billion worth of free cash flow. This means that in an average year, Illinois Toolworks produces about $2.4 billion worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $2.4 billion of their average free cash flow, by their $78 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 3.1% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. So that's both slightly below the yield of the 10-year treasury, and that's also a couple of percentage points below that 5% risk premium we're looking for. So this is going to be an X here on metric number six, as based off their average free cash flows, it doesn't look like Illinois Toolworks is giving us that risk premium that we're ideally seeking in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury at today's valuations of the business. Also worth noting is that because they're free cash flows have declined over this time frame. Their most recent fiscal year's free cash flows are actually down from where they've been at averaged out over the last five years. So again, we learned that the business produced $1.9 billion worth of free cash flow in their most recent fiscal year. 
quarter. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $1.9 billion of their most recent fiscal year's worth of free cash flow by their $78 billion total enterprise value, that only gives us about a 2.4% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. So that's even lower than where they've been at on average here. However, just because we're off here on metric number six doesn't mean that you're going to toss this business out in its entirety. This is just one of our six metrics. And even though these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful and they're meant to be taken in holistically and they don't serve as financial advice or a buy or sell recommendation of any security. We've also got some interesting things left to cover for Illinois Toolworks that's worth sticking around for. So then as a bonus here, we're taking a look at Illinois Toolworks dividend profile. So Illinois Toolworks both is a dividend king, meaning that they're a member of the S&P 500 who's consecutively increased their dividends for more than 50 years and they pay out an above average dividend yield. Currently, they're paying out a 2.2% dividend yield. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends or dividend track records. So it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business to determine whether or not those are healthy and whether or not the business is able to support their dividends with either their earnings or their cash flows, depending on the type of business. So for Illinois Toolworks, we want their dividends to be well supported by their free cash flows. And that's been the case in all five of these years. Illinois Toolworks, as no surprise, has grown their dividends throughout these five years. And even though their free cash flows have declined, they've managed to support their dividends in all five of these years with their free cash flows. However, it is worth being aware of that in their most recent fiscal year, their payout ratio was pretty high relative to where they had been at historically. And this came after the company made a relatively significant an increase in their dividend payouts. So if you're potentially interested in Illinois Toolworks in part because of either its dividend track record and its dividend king status, or because of its abilities to return cash to shareholders through its high dividend yield, then this is something that you would want to keep an eye on, as it does look like the business's dividends would have the potential to come under some pressure here, especially if their free cash flows were to decline into the future as well. Again, though, the company was able to support their dividends with their free cash flows in all five of these years, but these past results are no guarantee for future performance of the business. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Illinois Toolworks, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for Illinois Toolworks. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with an average of their free cash flows over their last three years to give us a more normalized perspective of the business's abilities to produce free cash flows. Then we're using historical growth assumptions based off how the business has grown their free cash flows dating back all the way till 1990 in order to project their average free cash flows out into the future. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward to give us a baseline projected estimate for Illinois Toolworks over their next 20 years. But if we assume that they grow their average free cash flows at a rate of 9% annually for the next 10 years, then we assume that that growth declines to growing at a rate of 5% annually for the 10 years out after that. We're not not going to be adding in the company's tangible book value today because that's significantly skewed based off how the accounting is done for their share buybacks. So to put this into some perspective, since the late 1990s, Illinois Toolworks has pretty much cut their shares outstanding in half. So they've reduced their share count from north of 600 million shares to now they're just slightly above 300 million shares. They've been buying back their shares at a pace of about 4% annually for the past 20 years or so. So that is quite a long history of share buybacks. But again, because of how the accounting is done, this significantly skews their tangible book value. So this is likely dramatically underestimated relative to what it would actually be for the business. So this is a major adjustment that you would want to make to this model after digging in and doing more work to understand the business and what their tangible assets are in more depth. Still without adding that in, if we were seeking a 15% rate of return from Illinois Toolworks, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is ideally seeking from his investments, in addition to his margin of safety requirements, requirements, then it looks like a potential fair intrinsic value for Illinois Toolworks based off today's valuations is only about $80 per share. So again, this is significantly skewed because their tangible book value is not included in this. You also want to be mindful that this 15% rate of return would be including their dividends, so we would not be doubly counting their dividends here. And then also please be aware that a discounted cash flow model is really based off the predictability of a business's future free cash flows. So while Illinois Toolworks has had a relatively high degree of business predictability, in the past. It's worth noting that that may not necessarily be the case for the business going forward into the future as things could change. The business is also not 100% recession proof as during 2008, 2009, and 2010, the business had three consecutive years of declining earnings. So that potentially hurt their business predictability in the
the past as well. Most importantly, please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. So in just a minute, we'll talk about our summary for Illinois Toolworks, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business, especially those that support the key points for either a potential long or potential short thesis of the company? So starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for the business, number one, Illinois Toolworks end markets are exposed to a multitude of secular trends that should help the firm capitalize on its organic growth opportunities. Number two, the firm still has an appreciable runway for margin expansion through measures like product line simplification. And number three, Illinois Toolworks has institutionalized a winning entrepreneurial culture that empowers its people, focuses on its most important customers, and emphasizes efficiency. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis of the business, number one, Illinois Toolworks margins are among the highest in the industrial space, and it will be difficult for management to drive them appreciably higher, particularly in a historically difficult operating environment. Number two, Illinois Toolworks is priced for perfection and staring down the barrel of a potential recession, it's particularly exposed to its short-term business cycle. And number three, Illinois Toolworks may struggle to replicate its past success given slow organic growth in the niche markets it serves. So hopefully that offers a potentially balanced perspective around some of the key qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for our wrap up. So in summary, Illinois Toolworks checks the box on three out of our six metrics today, meaning that the company looks like it is moderately attractive for further research. The business earns very high average returns on capital, coming in more than four times those of a typical business. While their revenues and their earnings are up slightly over the last five years, their free cash flows have declined moderately in their past year as the business took hits to both changes in their receivables as well as changes in their inventory. However, Illinois Toolworks has also bought back 8% of their shares outstanding in the last five years, and they've cut their share count in half since the late 1990s. Even with their recent declines in their free cash flows, it looks like both on an average and a current basis that Illinois Toolworks is in a good position to be able to support their debt load. However, on both a current and an average basis of their free cash flows to their enterprise value, it does not look like Illinois Toolworks is providing us with that slight margin of safety that we'd be looking for for a risk premium in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury. Looking at their dividend profile, while the business has been able to support a growing dividend in all five of these years, and they've managed to support that dividend with free cash flows in all five of these years, the business's dividends may come under some pressure, especially if their free cash flows were to decline into the near future, as their dividend payout ratio was pretty high in their most recent fiscal year. Then finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Illinois Toolworks, if you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward for the business. Based off today's valuations of the company, if you were seeking a 15% rate of return, and again with the caveat that we did not include their tangible book value because that's skewed based off their accounting due to their massive amount of share buybacks over the past 20 years or so, then it looks like a fair value for Illinois Toolworks today would only be about $80 per share. So that is well below the company's current stock price. However, again, please keep in mind that there are reasons why this may or may not be potentially accurate and applicable for the business. So it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering the poten- and before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Illinois Toolworks. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 119 bucks. That's just 33 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but if you use my link, it's 50% off. So check it out if you're interested. 
Through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Illinois Toolworks, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a more reasonable, appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business, and you can truly understand the ins and outs of that company and understand what's important and what's not important for the business going forward. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Illinois Toolworks, Inc., ticker symbol ITW. Again, we looked at the business today because because the company is a dividend king. They've consecutively increased their dividend payouts for each of the past 59 years. And with Illinois Toolworks checking the box on three of our six metrics, it looks like the company is moderately attractive for further research into the business. So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what company you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Illinois Toolworks with me, and have a great day.